Okay. Um, at this point, we will move on to the next crat, uh, which is the Easter crat, I believe. Countess Yay. Faye Wellen, would you like to, oh to lead us in a conversation about the Easter crat? <laughs> yes. Um, so I could honestly, again, um, we're, we're lucky that we have an entire class um, from Amy already on ANS Krat. Uh, we don't really have one for Beastocrat in the Nine Blades yet. I guess we have Cam as well, but um, so I'm, but I'm still gonna, I'm not gonna go as in depth because I could go till ten. Uh, <laughs> Beastocrat is insane. We are feeding people. Everybody loves to eat. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna go with the same way that you went with, um, first, the bid. The things that Beastocrat need to have in the bid um, are usually your menu, which is something that you're going to discuss with your um, autocrat. Um, if you need a themed menu, or if they would prefer you to do a themed menu, or if you're actually willing to do a themed menu. Um, usually, since the bid is already created, you're going to know kind of what your setup is going to be. So you wouldn't necessarily do um, like, a, not that anybody would do a seven course meal, but nobody's going to do a seven course meal when the only kitchen available to you is a microwave. Uh, side note, autocrat, please book spaces with actual kitchens. Um, talk to your feastocrats, um, especially because usually before the bid is created, you guys have already talked and you kind of already know what you want your feast of crap to do, you need to book your space based on that kind of, um, what, you, what you're expecting from your feast of crap. Um, let me think, what else? Um, numbers. Um, usually with your bid, or at least um, in my experience of bids, um, your autocrat, as we said before, will usually go I'm hearing video games as a side note, and I don't think it's me. So sorry, <laughs> that's my tens unit. I am hooked up to a tens unit <laughs> thing right now, oh. and uh, my lead wire two keeps on um, shutting off. I thought I was <laughs> screwing up, and something nope. was like. I'm so sorry. I, um, I cannot. It doesn't have I'm a beep. It's I'm so sorry. No, please don't as apologize. I can get it to... that now that I know what it is, I was literally picturing like little. Bloop. Bloop. Like Frogger was... or something. <laughs> yeah. Man, I wish this thing so, had Frogger. Was... That'd be so entertaining. <laughs> I was worried okay, my blue was good. picking up something, and I. I... Yep. Yeah, <laughs> no. 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 You're good. That's that's 100% my bad. Um, but it is running now, Not so it your should be bad. good. Terribly sorry. <laughs> mandatory. Oh my god. Now I feel just like a butt. So, no. No. Yeah. No. No. Oh god. Stupid lead wire. Why? <laughs> Something with technology. This All good. Is... I will stop trance. bringing attention to that. So You're fine. Now I feel like You're I'm... good. I feel like a dick. Okay. No, um, no, not at all. Again, no, I am, if anyone knows me, I am very, very open um, about my medical things. I'm having surgery next week, so um, I have a machine on that takes care of uh, numbing the area. Um, but my electrodes are not staying. <laughs> On and my lead wire is disconnecting. Of everything, <laughs> my sweet, sweet caffeine. Um, Just readjust super uncomfortably. I'm so sorry. That's all good. Go ahead. So beast, good. beast, yeah, all that beast. beast stuff. So one of the other things in your bid, um, usually, um, as I as I as I think, uh, me as feastocrat, I will usually, um, your autocrat will look ahead before like back to see what kind of numbers you're expecting again that's always variable depending on like the weather and if somebody scheduled an event right next to it or like what maybe your park just flourished in the last year so you're like can't even use last year's attendance numbers um but you're going to get numbers somehow and usually how i bid for numbers budget wise is I will do increments so like if I know there's going to be 30 people there I will give you a headcount budget for 30 but I will also give you a headcount budget for 50 I'll give you a headcount budget for 80 um, 
and if for whatever reason they think it's higher, you know what I mean, like they will they will know what they're looking for. They will want sort of dollar amounts of what you think you're going to spend. Um, my goal is usually in a bid. I'm going to probably over bid <laughs> and uh, then I'm going to come under because uh, stuff happens. <laughs> And there's always a possibility that you're going to need that little bit of extra in the budget to uh, save fees because food is fairly important at an event when it's an actual in-person event, not so much now with the COVID stuff, but after like, if there's people there, people are going to want to eat. I take these super seriously, so um, I think it's a mandatory crap tradition. Not everybody feels this way, so. We can argue that if you want. Uh, so yeah, site. So that goes with budget. Um, most people, it really depends on what kind of event you're having. Um, some people I've heard aim for 250 a head. Uh, some people aim for six dollars a head. Uh, it will all be sort of rolled into your event fee, depending mm -hmm. on. Yeah, it, it's usually just rolled into the event fee. Um, usually your, your event fee will be higher if you're having an insanely crazy dinner. Um, and this is all in your bid. So that's just the first step. These are all the things that you kind of have to think about and put in your bid. So it's your menu, your numbers, and your estimated cost. I do per head. Uh, it depends. Again, you could do an estimated whole cost of I'm going to just ballpark 150 bucks. That's that's what I'm going to spend. Uh, so again, talk about it with your autocrat. Um, don't undercut yourself. You're probably going to run into something that you need to spend money on. Uh, everybody forgets about buying cutlery if you don't have it. <laughs> you know, that's part of your feast budget. Uh, people forget that you need to keep stuff warm if you don't have access to like steam trays and stuff. You got to buy those um, or ask, obviously. <laughs> Ask ahead of time and borrow them if you can, because that that cost builds up, um, or legacy kit and stuff. Um, so yeah, that's basically the bid stuff that you kind of need to have tips and tricks. Tips and tricks for bid stuff. Um, know when your event is. Uh, plan your feast around what's in season. Always. Um, don't, for whatever reason, in the middle of winter, decide that you want to do, um, I don't know, I'm trying to think of like a strawberry shortcake, um, unless you're using frozen strawberries, which is kind of gross, um, <laughs> do it in the summer. That's a, that's, a, that's a June dish. You know what I mean? Uh, you can, there's, there's stuff on the internet. That's your tips and tricks to tell you what's in season and when, and it will always be cheaper. Always be cheaper. Um, Pumpkin spice in fall. <laughs> Yeah, uh, pumpkins July. are. <laughs> I love pumpkins, and yes, side note, they freeze really well. So, like, if you know for whatever reason you want pumpkin pie at your January event, buy it in November and freeze it. Chest freezers are your friend. Um, mistakes, things to avoid. So, I'm going through the list because I, I, last time I didn't even check what we were supposed to cover. Because so, I'm super, you know. <laughs> There are options, Prepared possibilities. And stuff. <laughs> there are. Yeah. It's good, good planning. Oh, that's weird. I've just I got them all written down. Uh, <laughs> mistakes and things to avoid. Um, don't plan your meal after the bid is in. Don't do it. Um, because normally, as I said, maybe it's just me, um, I'm going to base an acceptance on a bid on um, what the feast is. So if uh, your other bid is like, we're going to spend $2,000 on Feast. And uh, your bid is like, we have no idea what we're doing for Feast. Chances are they're still <laughs> going to go for the two grand bid. No matter if it's crazy. So they, they're like, well, at least they have a menu. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, so that's organized, good planning. Uh, mistakes, things to avoid. Do, 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 trying to think. Um, don't do it alone. When you do your bid, um, I know it says one person's name under Feastocrat. It's never one person. Not a good one, anyway. Um, if you <laughs> try doing it alone, 
I did. Didn't work. Didn't work at all, and I ended up begging people to help me, even though they were all like, allow me to help you, and I was like, nah, I got this. I think I did it with one other person at one point, and we were still scrambling. Um, my best feasts that I've ever done, I've had a whole team pre-planned, and it's been amazing, and it's gone smoothly for the most part. Like, feast stuff has gone smoothly, weather not so much. Um, <laughs> can, I, can, I just, uh, can I just say something on that? Um, Always. Segwaying back to ANS, um, I was at uh, Great Eastern uh, in Goldenvale. Uh, Got to be going back about, I think, four or five years now. And Nexus Crow, Sir Nexus Crow, was doing feast. He was also doing an ANS class. The ANS class was how to make buns. We had buns with feast. Nice. He roped in about oh, a good awesome. fifteen of us to make the buns for the feast. Sometimes your ANS classes can sync up. And he had. You can have an ANS uh, competition to cover all of the tables. Right, uh, I've seen things where, like, for for your feast hall, right, you could have a a, a little competition where, uh, you know, you can have groups tables uh, compete against each other to decorate their their tables in the feast hall. Right, all of a sudden, someone else has decorated your feast hall and hasn't cost you anything. <laughs> yeah, don't I don't mean, be afraid to to rope people in as long as you have experienced people supervising them. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, literally. Sorry? Gonna, mm, that's literally what I was gonna say. On the bid, that one name, that's just the person who's delegating everybody else. All of these craps, they have teams. Um, it's not a no crap position is one person's job. Yes. So even autocrat has help. So um, do you wanna just other quickly go over um? the importance of having um, like dietary, dietary restrictions um, listed on the bid. I was so, getting to that. that yeah. is, <laughs> yes. So, uh, the thing is, on the bid, you're not going to know who's going to come, but you need to make sure to account for those things. So that is um, sort of in your, I sort of added in, that's why I overshoot on my budget because I know that there's going to be allergies. Um, not everybody has my brain that happens to have everybody's allergies in the nine blades. Side note, if you ever want to know, just DM me, I'll let you know. It's just in my brain. Eventually I'll write it down. Um, <laughs> but if somebody tells me an allergy, I automatically remember that allergy. And um, I'm super... Ugh. This is, this is my biggest caveat. Allergies and, and cross-contamination and food sensitivities are super important when you're dealing with feeding a group. Um, yeah, that's, that's day of. So we'll get to that. We'll get to that. But yes, always in your bid, assume that there is going to be a small portion of your feast um, that you're going to have to make with, without certain ingredients or make amends or uh, 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 addendums to, um, like gluten or whatever. Um, and dairy and stuff like that. Uh, some of those um, uh, allergy sensitive um, ingredients can get costly. Uh, usually they're one of the highest costs in feast. Um, I don't agree with it, but a lot of, I've heard a lot of feastocrats not accommodate um, allergies. Uh, they just said, meh, you don't get to pay for feast, bring your own food. Um, I don't agree with that. I think everybody should be able to enjoy feast if they uh, so choose to. So I will accommodate you, um, and everybody I've ever taught will, and the people who taught me um, will accommodate you. So, yeah, uh, there's no harm in asking, uh, but we can only know what you tell us. Um, so this is this segues into pre. So your bid has been accepted. All sorry, real quick, real quick, do... yeah. if I can. Oh, um, sorry. So. Um... For, for those that are adjudicating um, your bid, it is, um, it's also good for them to know that you are accounting for these things because it can be a real red flag um, and can prevent your bid from going through um, in compared to someone else's bid. If, let's say, you have just a meat thing and that's it, um, and your menu says that there is no even vegetarian option, that we have steak and that's it, no other item. Um, 
that can be a very, uh, that can be a red flag and that can um, really tank your bid. Um, so letting the adjudicators know that you are accounting for it um, and for, you know, again, for that to reflect in your budget. But yeah, it's it's actually going to be, um, it will help your bid case. Super, yeah, super good point because I just, again, I've done so many that I don't, that's just something I automatically do is that there's always a meat dish. In Felfrost, it's um, called the meatitarian dish because we have people who are literally yeah. anti-vegetable. So it's where there's no vegetables as <laughs> touched the meat. Um, <laughs> and then there's the attention. vegetarian dish. <laughs> Yeah, um, I I also like meat. I feel that there should be meat at every feast available, but I also feel that vegetarians have value, and it's really not that hard to make a vegetarian dish. It's really not. Um, won't be the exact same thing, but I can make it tasty. Um, so yeah, segue into pre-bid. Yeah, sorry. This is where <laughs> you're going to find out. Oh, uh, do you need more stuff? Does no, no, more? no, 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 no. Yeah. I just wanted to, before you get into... Pre-bids up, yeah. Anything I'm forgetting because yeah. I tend to babble. I'm also literally eating popcorn because I haven't eaten all day. Good, yay, good piece of crap, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't cook for myself. I cook for other people. Um, um, but yeah, okay. So scaling up and down, go, go. actually. I, I do have a question for you. Um, mm -hmm. Scaling up and down, how do you do it? Do you make different menus or do you just think about uh, yeah. making more of an item? Because I know so, one year for Bot D we did a, a roast pig, a spit roasted pig. That's not really scalable. Yeah. So, um, like, how would you handle that? Specifically the roast pig thing? No, no, no. I mean, just in general. Like, do you make one dish that you know you can make more of, or you can make more dishes of, or how do you handle it? Because mm. you said that you do, so like, a, a 40 person, a 60 person, an 80 person. Yeah. Layer. So, okay. actually, the way that I shop, Specifically, um, the more people um, on the numbers, chances are the actual cost goes down um, because I can buy in bulk. And um, most of the time I'm looking ahead to see like which protein I'm going to buy and I check when that's going to be on sale. So I can buy an intense amount of protein and I have a chest freezer. So I will buy enough to feed 50, 60 people. And then if I need the 80, I can go and amend it and it'll still reflect my bid, no problem. If I need less, I just cut the cost of whatever I bought it on sale and it stays in my freezer and I feed my family. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, usually scaling up. It's not scaling up by much because your costs tend to go down when you're making dishes for more people because most feast dishes are not like um, pure protein. There's a lot of stews and stuff where you can add the cheaper ingredients like potatoes or beans or stuff like that, which you buy in bulk. It's really not that much of an upgrade to a cost on the numbers. Um, mm -hmm. The things that cost you the most are usually the dietary sensitive stuff. So if you end up with like, see that's, mm, it depends. If, so in the pre-bid, um, or sorry, after the bid has been accepted and I'm looking at the numbers and stuff and I see for whatever reason, um, there's a huge vegetarian boom. And then, you know, I said I was going to serve pot roast uh, and I have a small vegetarian side dish. Cause normally, at, at least in my experience in the nine blades, um, there's about five or six vegetarians. So it's a very small piece of my feast. So it will be, it, I can support it on their stuff. But then if I look at the numbers and I'm like, oh my God, there's 65 vegetarians. Um, <laughs> then I need, I need to fix it and scaling up. Um, I might have to go to the autocrat and then we might have to go to who we bid to be like, okay, so things kind of changed. But again, that's why I always overbid. Mm -hmm. on the numbers because I can usually there's a way to scale up and down when you when you don't give an exact total so like hmm I'm trying to think of um, my I don't remember my exact numbers for um, bot D 
um, I think I had uh, quoted 500 and I came in at 300. So that was a $200 savings, but if for whatever reason mm -hmm. something happened, an entire barbecue fell over or something, we, we could have accommodated because we had $200 in the pot to be able to fix it, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's always yeah, easier it's, to it's, use your budget than to ask for more budget. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And um, man, do autocrats love it when you don't use your entire budget. That's oh true. my god, you're so <laughs> under budget. <laughs> this is amazing. Very happy. <laughs> and, and it also like helps with your profit line because then they're like, oh, we didn't have to spend that. Look at how much money we made. Because technically, in your mind, it was already spent. I don't I didn't spend it. So, um, there's, my, there's my secret trick. <laughs> just as a, a little sidebar note, I've, I've submitted the bids and I've approved bids for Wolven Fang. And having, asking for extra budget is always good because you can go up to that number or come in under it. But mm -hmm. approving the bid, the higher the cost, the higher the budget, uh, the harder it is to get approved by um, the park. So itself. I don't go so, insane. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So there's a happy medium, That's the essentially. Thing. Yeah. I give a realistic budget. That's the thing. Is I'm, again, this will go into tips and tricks and stuff like that. And um, when you're actually, hey, let's go into pre-bed now. Um, when you're actually shopping for stuff, you're never buying stuff full price for a feast. Nobody ever does. Restaurant does not buy full price, ever. There are specific stores that you can go to. You can, we have an amazing community, just as a side note, um, who have a lot of connections. When, um, it didn't end up doing wildfire, but when I had um, bid for wildfire, um, they're a honey farm. Uh, I asked how much and could we get a discount added into our feast. And um, I think somebody, I was gonna do pancakes and um, somebody just happened to have like six liters of syrup that would have been my cost like cut in half right there you know what i mean um yeah asking asking around for people who have connections for um foodstuffs is really good um a lot of my felfrost feasts um because i do classes like i teach cooking classes at my work i'm able to borrow the steam tables um, if they're not being used that weekend. So I save money there. Um, there is kind of thing. I look for sales. I have flip on my phone. It's F L I P P. Um, and I look to see what's on sale and I never buy anything full price for fees ever, 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 ever. I have coupons. I am the weird, crazy coupon lady. Yes. Um, also question? some of your, um, park might mates might have like a Costco card. Right, that they can assist oh, yeah, you. Oh, I definitely do. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Costco actually. So for the most part, I know everybody goes to Costco. They are not the cheapest place to get anything. Hmm. Um, maybe dishes and stuff. But there is way better stores to buy protein. There is um, local farmers markets. They will cut you a deal if you just go talk to them. Be like, hey, I do this thing. I dress up like silly people and I would like to um, use your produce and um, they will for them like what are they gonna do say no, say no oh no okay so I just go look at him last you know what I mean the worst thing they're gonna do is say no and you've already accounted for that um, mm -hmm. there is uh, I think in Toronto there's like the bump and dent store where like there's dents or something and cans or like you know, um, PC has these giant bags that says, um, not, what is it, unnaturally perfect or something. They're always cheaper um, because it doesn't look pretty. Nobody cares if your carrots are pretty. Nobody cares. <laughs> Maybe Ken can, but I don't know. <laughs> no, Ken, Ken is very, very, very visual. Um, so, no, Ken doesn't care. No, I'm just kidding. I just needed to shout out Ken because I love him and Ken may, must be mentioned in every video that I do. Um. <laughs> also, side note, um, make sure you know whether or not your uh, park has a feast kit. Because um, if your park mm. has a feast, kit, a feast kit, don't go and buy plates and cutlery and stuff, because like, 
you already have it. <laughs> it's a huge waste uh, of money if I, you got it. I, I know I made the mention in the Autocrat video, but I, I want to make another mention here. Uh, I think Wolvenfang, I did the audit for two years, and it came out to something like 60 bucks or something like that. Um, and or No, it was like 40 bucks a year. It was just in salad bowls, tongs, juice jugs. S silly little things, but that 60 bucks adds up and adds up and adds up over the course of years. Just ask the last person who ran the feast. Ask the ask the monarch. Um, you never know. They might have like an entire stack, like three feet high of salad bowls, just because everyone kept buying new ones. I can't turn my phone, but I have all the Pelfrost cutlery right there <laughs> in my living room. <laughs> As a side note, next Beastocrat, um, I have uh, 300 forks, knives, and spoons in my living room. Hey, that's a thing. <laughs> Yay! Um, sorry, yeah. I'm like. Linagon has awkward. like, you, like a crazy me? full. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah, no, okay, Linagon has a has a uh, just a just a full straight up feast kit. Um, and uh, Grace did an amazing job just uh, getting all of that, facilitating that, and raising money to um, afford it. Yeah, it was it was a huge endeavor, and uh, now we have that for for all of our feasts. And it cuts it cuts down financially. Side. Um, day after holidays, as you had mentioned before, guess what else goes on sale? All those party supplies, yep. so you can get ten cups for ten cents. Yep. Make your feast kiss with that. Nobody cares. Um, in Belfrost specifically, after Christmas is absolutely great because everything has snowflakes on it. We have a themed feast kit, right? It's amazing. Uh, Canada Day, there's moose everywhere. <laughs> Day after Canada Day. All that Canada Day swag, Belfrost is like set. Good. <laughs> Good stuff. So, and that's the thing is if it breaks or it gets lost, cost you a nickel. You know what I mean? Yeah. But in the end, after over time, if it doesn't get lost or whatever, you've saved, you know, that amount of money, as um, Darian was saying, disposable plates, they add up. Uh, one of the other cool things, which would be during the day, as a side note that I've seen that I've never actually done yet, but I keep telling myself I'm going to, um, have your players bring their own feast kit. Um, I've seen people with their cool little, like, wooden bowl, wooden spoon, etc., whatever. Um, you get to jump the line. You bring your own bowl and plate and stuff, and I don't have to wash it, I'm going to let you jump the line. I'm going to let you jump mm. in front of Monarchy. Cause I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> no, I'm gonna hold I you that. I got a whole like set of these kits here. Yeah. Okay, so you would be like <laughs> second because I always ask for my allergy people to come first. Um, again, this would go to cross contamination, and I'm jumping ahead again. So, okay, pre bid. <laughs> this is where you're doing all your shopping. Um, for the most part, you're doing all your shopping. You're looking for sales. Um, you're asking your friends. Tons of people in Felfrost work in the food service industry. Chances are they can get you a deal. Um, people will have stuff that you need uh, at the on the day. This is where you're going to know, do you need steam tables? Do you need barbecues? Do you need um, something to facilitate your cooking? That kind of thing. Um, in the pre-bid, so I've done this. I'm not sure if other people have done this. I've cooked feast in a park that was not mine. So... <laughs> setting up where you're going to make your feast in this um, city that is not yours. Um, I was super facilitated in uh, Wolven Fang, as a side note. We totally took over Jonesy's house and cooked feast there. It was great. I could not have done it without him. <laughs> or Simeon. Simeon butchered so much meat that, like, all of it. <laughs> butchered it. Because, side note, if you learn how to butcher, you're going to save money. Because then you don't have to pay anybody to do it. So... Also, also good. There's your tip for the pre. Um, I'm trying to think what else needs to be in the pre-bid. This is where you know exactly how much money you're going to spend. And staring at Chancellor, keep your receipts. <laughs> do not lose your receipts. Pizza. <laughs> do not. Do not. I know. Hold yourself back. Do not do your grocery shopping at the same time as you're doing your feast grocery shopping. And then having to go through the bid and blacking out what you bought and oh, stuff yeah. like separate it. It's that's what those little bars are for. Do yours first, 
and then separate it and then buy the entire feast thing on a separate bill. Please, your chancellors will thank you. Anybody who has to look at those receipts will thank you. Sorry, popcorn and coffee. Um, <laughs> Grocery stores are hell trying to figure out taxes. Because some things are taxed um, and some things aren't. So, yes, that's a, that's a good thing to know. Um, I don't know if... So I do that because I'm like, again, the frugal person and the super coupon -y person, I'm watching um, when people scan in my stuff. Uh, and uh, that can be daunting. I do not blame anybody if they don't do this. Um, <laughs> I will watch. Um, if something scans in wrong, I will tell them. Uh, one of the things that happens in uh, Canada or Ontario is if something scans in wrong, fair scanning practice, and it's under 10 bucks, it's free. So when somebody says, oh, no price, I guess it's free. Yeah, it, it literally, that's the law. <laughs> if, they, if it's wow. listed under a different price, so let's say uh, this is how I got butter for free. Um, the listed price uh, was two bucks and it scanned in at 4.99. I said, nope, that's not right, it's $2. And she's like, uh, no, but it's scanned in at 4.99. I'm like, okay, hold on. And I went and I got the price sticker and brought it back. I said, no, it is $2. Um, she then had to give it to me for free because it was under $10. Um, usually it will go, if it's over $10, they have to take $10 off the price. Um, some stores only give you the first one for free and then the other ones they must give you at the listed price, which would have been $2. Um, no Frills does the entire thing. Uh, side note, No Frills Price Masters. Walmart Price Masters. Um, what's the other one? Um, independent Grocer, I think, price matches. Giant Tiger price matches. Please price match. <laughs> you will save so much money. I know it's a pain in the ass, but <laughs> get ready to again. Richer stream, but you will save so much money from price matching. I know, I sound like a TLC, but this is how I go under budget every time. Oh no, yes, I price match your cat food. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. <laughs> all the time, all the time. So yes, that's your free thing. So you've got all of your uh, groceries. If you're shopping in advance, please make sure you have some way to safely store it, i.e. don't buy mm. like spinach two months in advance. It's not gonna last. Right? So most of the time you do most of your shopping if you don't have a chest freezer like a week before. Um, if you're coming from out of town, if you're doing it the day before, please make plans to be able to facilitate that and store all of your stuff safely. So like, for example, Bati's camping event. Um, you need to make sure that you have coolers, you have ice, and you have the ability to not poison people because you cannot keep meat out in the sun, you will kill someone. Please do not do that. Um, tips and tricks. Coolers go both ways. <laughs> you boil water and you put it in a cooler and you let it sit for 20 minutes, it will keep that at temperature. Dump the water, it's now like something that will keep it at a uh, safe temperature. Um, if you went to the bot D where I cooked, you will know that the um, baked potatoes that I had way too many of uh, we're still piping hot the morning of. People could have baked potatoes for breakfast. And it would say, mm. so I checked the temperature because always have a meat thermometer with you. That's mandatory. And if you don't, I will be upset and ask me because I probably have one. <laughs> Try to think. Anything else that I'm missing pre mid that you're thinking of? Oh, no, wait, the allergy thing. Ha! Yeah. Wait, this is where you make your allergy post. <laughs> always make your allergy post. If you're not me and already know everybody's allergies, even if you do, <laughs> make an allergy post. Because guess what? We get new players all the time. Allergies develop. Allergies go away. Um, always make a food sensitivity and allergy post. Never assume and always facilitate. Um, allergies are a serious thing. Uh, it goes along with like the medic and the safety and the liability and everything like that. You are feeding people. Always take them like you're gonna kill someone if they, if you do not facilitate them, you know what I mean? Like, oh, just mm, so serious, so serious. And if you have me on your feast team, I will, I will be pointing and yelling at you if you cross contaminate anything. <laughs> yes, I'm very, yeah. Okay, I'm trying to think, where are you on me? Here, up here? I'm there, hello. <laughs> That's Marianne. Amy? Yep. yep. That's Dennis. 
Yep. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, just a, a, a thought there. Um, flipping the, the allergy thing on its head a little bit. If you're posting on a thread saying, I have this allergy, um, make sure you're being honest. Uh, there's a huge problem right now where people have taken, I don't like green olives on my pizza. I'm allergic. Um, it makes people less invested in believing when someone says they have a real allergy. Please be honest. Please be upfront. Uh, and if you just don't like green olives, feel free to say you don't like green olives. But don't say you have an allergy when you don't. Because someone might just start not caring. And it also, it, it makes a lot more work for the feast team. Uh, if they have to prepare a specialty meal for you. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, I take every mention of any food sensitivity or allergy um, super serious. Um, so if you tell me you don't like something, chances are I'm going to teach it like an allergy, or treat it like an allergy anyway. Mm -hmm. um, with the cross-contamination type stuff, I'm very big on that. Um, one of the things, one of the main tips, tricks, things that I do is that anything that I'm cooking, I do the vegetarian stuff first. Um, I don't want to say by name. There's specific people in our, our principality who cannot do um, spices. Uh, I do all of their stuff first, all of it, um, and uh, make sure that there's enough for them to have seconds, because usually my face have seconds. I don't know why. Um, so there's always enough for uh, those, I think there's three people who can't do spices, so they get just not even pepper. Just they can season it themselves however they want, that goes first. Secondary would be um or even on like i will wash everything down and do my vegetables and all the vegetarian stuff so there's no cross contamination whatsoever you know any allergy like for the most part most feasts um you don't really do the high allergy things so you're not probably going to see a lot of like peanuts tree nuts that kind of thing because that's a huge kind of proliferate allergy um there's usually always so there's a way to get around using lactose in pretty much every recipe you're ever going to do so there's really not a reason to ever use lactose or milk there's there's substitutes right and it's they're not that expensive basel makes a great vegan margarine as a side note that is completely lactose and whatever free um yeah so, and, and be careful what you're, what you're substituting with, because somebody might be allergic to that. We had, uh, oh, geez, at one point, I, yeah, no, I had, <laughs> so I was like, okay, there's a nut allergy, and there's a, um, there's a nut allergy, and there's lactose-sensitive people. Okay, cool. This soup, I can totally do it. Awesome. Coconut milk. Allie's uh, allergic to coconut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, damn it! <laughs> So I made it work. Just make sure that anybody who has a an allergy, you keep their stuff separate. You're not packaging it in the same cooler, all that kind of stuff. Sorry, I'm very heavy on the allergy thing. Um, your pre-bid, no, no, during your bid, you should really have your team as a side note. But if for whatever reason you need extras, that's where your pre is. Put out feelers, be like, hey, anybody want to be a runner? Anybody want to be a dish person? Anybody? want to chop vegetables or whatever usually at least in my case i have a lot of people being like can i help with these and most of the time i will say yes i definitely do <laughs> so yeah did i okay what else did i miss in pre-bid i know there's something in there. Allergies. uh do you mean like uh pre-event yes pre-event not pre-bid sorry because <laughs> literally i have a written bid pre oh uh, one random thing um, when you are doing Feast Crat for an event that is in another city and you have to do it, like, the, the day before, have you ever dealt with, um, them just not having an item in the store? Like, them running out of a thing that's, like, super essential to what you're doing? I mean, cooking is one of those things you can substitute 
pretty much anything and everything. Um, I'm trying to think. If for whatever reason chicken goes up in price, I'm going to change the protein. Um, people are going to deal because there's going to be food. Um, or you just like I go to another store if they don't have it or like... Oh yeah, I go to like... I'm hor- I have a car, so I'm lucky. I'm one of the pizza crafts that has a car, and mm-hmm. I'm totally willing to drive around to a bazillion other stores. And usually, I'm looking on my little app to be like, okay, it's cheapest here, I'm going here. Cheapest here, I'm going here. If they don't price match. Um, but yeah, um, I will do my best to stick to the menu. But if for whatever reason, like, I don't know, chickens start being on the extinct list. I'll go buy turkey. <laughs> like, there's always something to, um, and people will be okay with it. That's the thing. You, it's this is not a steadfast. The menu is try to stick to it, but people will understand. Like, like sorry guys, I couldn't do steak and lobster. No, no, no. Like, they'll <laughs> understand. They will have feet. Like, they will have feast. They will be hungry at the end of the day as long as you're not feeding them gross slop and it's healthy, like um, prepared correctly, and you're not giving anybody food poisoning. People will be okay with it. Um, yeah, it's not, it's, yeah, it's important, but it's not that important. Just food. There needs to be food. Um, if they don't like it, Monty has a subway. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, there, there's only so far I will go to accommodate at one point. Like, if everybody starts complaining when I've worked for months and months on the feast, meh, go to Subway. I did my best. Mm-hmm. Don't beat yourself up. There's always somebody who's not going to like it. Um, it's like having children. Everybody's a picky eater. It's fine. It's fine. And they probably <laughs> So, no. That's the thing. <sighs> yeah. That's... <laughs> Nobody can accommodate everybody. I sure as heck try. But usually, and 100% of the time, somebody who has um, allergies, and I, see, I, I, I know that this is the, like a, a thing with everybody that occurred, they don't expect to be able to eat at feast. Um, the person who I was referring to with the spices <laughs> and stuff like that, she never expects to be able to eat at feast. So when she's accommodated, man, is she happy right so and i love seeing that that's like that's like a win for me that's an award for me right uh lisa are you still there your video has frozen oh nope she got taken by the goblins um that happens yep uh one thing one thing i was gonna mention though uh double checking equipment I think it's true for every office, but I think we need to, especially here, double check everything works the night before you start cooking. Because if you find out that you're you're missing crock pots or or ovens or something, then the last thing you want to do is find out out ten seconds to go time. Yep. Uh, Tyler, if you can hear me, um, we've lost Lisa. Are you able to come assist? Uh, oh, and my phone just died. Neat. Um, could you also plug in my ex- power cord? We yeah. lost Lisa. Um, terribly sorry. Technical difficulties. Oh, You've been eaten by the gremlins. I said, I, I, I mentioned just, Oh, gremlins. What can be unplugged albums. here? Um, kind of plugged in every other Everything slot. that isn't the blue thing. Everything that isn't it? Yep. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, so random, just a side tip, um, for, like, uh, if you are, you know, if you're scrat or even if um, you're like autocrat, make sure that um, you can help accommodate mm-hmm. folks. Hello, you're back. <laughs> um, to make sure that you have a set plan of how um, all the food and um, whatever feast gear, um, how to get it to the site or the event, um, because you might not get lucky and have a feast crat that has a car. Um, so that's just a random, um, random side tip, just a thing of just planning. Lisa, go for it. So <laughs> We're good. <laughs> cut off because I was talking and talking, and I'm like, "No, they're moving." <laughs> I think I'm done. 
Can we, huh. We're just trying to be super yeah. stealth. We're just don't. Not make a move. Not only there. No, literally, <laughs> yeah. You were stone solid still, and I'm like, guys, <laughs> guys, did I miss anything in the pre, like, event thing? Well, next time it's just gonna be a prank. We're just gonna be super still and just uh, see if you you notice that we're still there or not. <laughs> I'm super gullible, so probably. I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So, was there anything in pre-event that I didn't cover for whatever reason? Not that I can think of. <laughs> yeah, uh, it it all falls back to also this stuff that you said. Make sure your peace team is able to get there, especially if you're relying on them for specific tasks that kind of thing um day of i mean day of for a feastocrat honestly is the day before um day before is when you usually start prepping the night before chances are your feastocrat is not sleeping the night before an event yeah. um we're probably cooking <laughs> probably until very early in the morning or we're prepping stuff that we need to if we're prepping on site um Again, this all depends on the site that you've been booked. Sometimes there's not enough room and you have to do everything at your home and transport it. So you have to make sure that you, if you need more than one car, you've booked that more than one car. Um, I've been super like lucky again with all of my feasts. As soon as I pull up, I have a line of people helping me carry in stuff, which is amazing. Um, and uh, so if you have the time and you see your feastocrat pull up, uh, chances are they're going to need help carrying stuff in. Um, good way for your first rows, second rows, third rows, just saying. We <laughs> like help. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, the day before is you're pre-cooking anything that you're not going to have time to make um, on-site or don't have the ability to make on-site. Um, so in my cases like soups and stuff like that chances are i'm going to be making it the night before um in ken's case um he's like the bread master um chances are he made his bread like way 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 beforehand um if you're doing turkey and you bought them in november or whatever for thanksgiving uh, make sure they are thawed and all that stuff um this is all the day before uh chopping your vegetables it will super help you out the next day um, just almost like um, a prep cook kind of thing. Usually prep cooks in the restaurant industry start at four in the morning, five in the morning. Um, at least all the ones that I know and when I held that position, super early in the morning. Um, it's way easier to do it before. Just do it the night before, package it really well, bring it with you, then you just have to sort of go as you go making stuff, right? Um, as a side note, I just thought about this um in the nine blades we kind of only do one meal um this all is like completely there's more that goes into it if you're responsible for more than one meal i guess um i believe crowns has an insane amount of meals right you're doing it aren't you are you doing it on purpose you guys aren't moving at all okay good. Uh. okay <laughs> 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 I was worried. <laughs> uh, so yeah. So, sometimes do multiple check. meals. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to think. Um, somebody who's uh, really good at doing multiple meals uh, would be Alexandra Budgen. Uh, she does like meal plans, and she probably preps for weeks ahead of time. I've only personally done one meal at feasts so far, so I'm basing it on my experience i don't know if either of you guys have been involved in uh making multiple meals or or helping so i've been or at some kingdom <laughs> events and things where um like the the knights would coordinate um making breakfast one morning right or uh, mm. a fighting company would take care of lunch for one of the afternoons right or something like that to where groups will will donate their their time and their resources and and whatnot and they will they will donate a meal kind of thing um or if uh right again if um if it's something that uh the budget can afford right um if if they have the expenses for it and can deal with the materials and um 
just having other groups be willing to make the things so that the main um, the main feast team can really prep for that that giant um, nighttime court feast, right? Um, just taking care of smaller meals, and um, sometimes there's also things where uh, like like taverns and stuff will have uh, snacks available throughout the day. Um, or just like small meals, right? If they have like maybe like a hot dog stand or a cheeseburgers, whatever, right? Um, there's there's other things that can happen where there's other meal options, um, but yeah. And some of it is just like literally just like pay as you go kind of thing. And some things are like yeah. meal plans that you uh, you purchase well before the event, so they're buying exactly what people have signed up for. Kind of thing so yeah mm -hmm. there's it's dependent for the event and your budget mm -hmm. yeah I, I didn't i did run a full tavern at uh, one bot d that had hot dogs hamburgers and that kind of you know whatever stuff uh, <laughs> um we actually did oatmeal in the morning there was breakfast toast uh coffee um juice Soul. gatorade uh water was free to whoever asked um Water. It, it was, <laughs> we always come back to water. Yeah. <laughs> Hydrate. <Sorry. laughs> it's important. Um, I have it, coffee. <laughs> you make you make coffee with water, right? Yeah, something like Hell that. that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we just keep on every and, every discussion always comes back to water. Water, you just it's true. It's gonna be important for everything. <laughs> yeah. Hail hydrate. Uh huh. Uh, but no, uh, having done an entire day's worth of meals where not necessarily for any set number of people but just having the stuff available clearing everything away being ready for the next one clear everything away be ready for the next one clear everything away at the end of the day and make sure the bears don't get into it yeah. um it's it's a lot of work and it's, it's something where you have to plan in advance what do i have that i can uh, it's easy to make and easy to clean up that you're not going to get a lot of wastage or spoilage uh, I can't keep this meat in the cooler all weekend. Okay, so I'll have to make a run back into town to get more uh, at X time so that I have it and it's fresh and whatever I had left over, I guess, goes in the garbage and try to balance those things. But that's also because I was running a tavern and not a pre-planned feast. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how many people I was serving at any given time. Also, a random that's thing. Um, you might be at a site or a situation where you have to keep the food in a very specific place because of wildlife <laughs> um like most people don't don't know that's a thing um and you know you might get lucky to where that's the thing that you never have to worry about but some places that's actually gonna be a thing <laughs> I, I grew up hunting and fishing, and if you're going to a camping event, uh, there's these wonderful things called bear bags. If you have anything that's not meat or, or like, uh, refrigeration required, you're going to want to put it up in a tree and far away from where people sleep. Because raccoons will go after the, your food, bears, foxes, wolves, um, and, and for different things. They're not all going to go after the same type of food but you don't want them around you. Um, so definitely, definitely, definitely look at where you're camping, what the biggest pest problems are, um, and it's not the same everywhere. Uh, so be aware of what you got and be aware of the risks when you go to a camping event and you're bringing food or you're cooking because that food can attract wildlife and wildlife can be dangerous. So on the side note, things to watch out mm -hmm. for. Um, stay out of Feast of Crats freaking coolers i've been to so many events where people go into the feast of kratz cooler and take mm. stuff out oh my god stop doing that it's not your cooler eventually you're gonna eat the food anyway <laughs> stop it stop it um one of the other things i we had pre-discussed not on um stream was um if the feast of Krat has water chances are that water's for feast um the autocrat should end probably will have water available for you um ask before you take anything please um because chances are we've literally in our brain portioned out okay i have this amount for this etc 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 it's all in my brain uh and you're gonna throw us off um yeah 
we there should be water available for you. That is mandatory, in my opinion, on every event. So, yeah. Yeah. Stay out of our coolers. <laughs> I don't want to have to buy locks. <laughs> That's annoying. Also, um... um be cautious of individuals that are drinking heavily, um, because they might also mistake coolers for things, or if, like, if the feast rat ends up keeping, uh, like, alcohol or something in, like, a thing, or it's, like, too close to someone else's thing, yeah, it's gonna be a bad time. <laughs> Talk to your autocrat. Honestly, there can be a place that is always, um... So even at Troll, that kind of thing, where it's always being watched um, if you need to. You know what I mean? And that's a, that's a perfect thing is you know, preparing for wildlife or whatever. Make sure everything is safely sealed, safely kept at a good temperature. Um, if for whatever reason you can't cook your meat right away, or, you know, maybe pre-cook it. That way it's, it's a different temperature that you have to keep that at, right? Because once you safely cool it down to reheat it, it's a lot safer than it is keeping raw meat, especially chicken. Oh my god, please just pre-cook your chicken. Um, <laughs> one so of the things that I always, horror um, stories. <laughs> warn against people, um, that um, chicken is really not a good thing to serve unless you have a proper kitchen. Like a proper kitchen with a fridge, a proper way to refrigerate it. That kind of thing. The other thing I kind of warn people against making for feast is rice. Um, rice is super dangerous if you've ever taken your food, say food handling. Um, if it gets to the danger point, it's literally like growing bacteria that can make you super, super sick. Mm. Um, there's certain things that like you can do that can make your food kind of safer. If it's a camping event, let's say you're doing coleslaw, do a vinegar based coleslaw. Don't do a mayonnaise based coleslaw. It'll be a lot safer. Mm -hmm. Trust me. It will be. <laughs> Eggs, that kind of thing. You know, you can... There's picnic food that is that is safe to, like, keep. And you have to be really mindful, because feast line sometimes is actually a really long time. So you have to watch the temperatures of your salads, like macaroni salad and stuff. If it's sitting out there for 45 minutes, the first person in line is probably fine. The last person in line might be eating rancid fucking macaroni salad. Ooh, I really <laughs> swore that time. Sorry. <laughs> I really swore that time. Sorry, super important. 18 I, plus I, again. I, I apologize. <laughs> it, it, okay, anyway. Yeah, so yeah specifically, it's, don't drink a horn of ale on this stream so it's not 19 plus. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you're just going to keep swearing. I... <laughs> I'm a it's not a class kid. until Lisa swears at least once. <laughs> I am very, I'm very Christened. passionate about <laughs> safe food handling specifically. Um, I know a lot of people don't agree with me, but I think every feastocrat that is serving a group, uh, there should be at least one person who has either previously been safe food handled or currently safe food handled, uh, because such a liability to accidentally poison somebody. Or the entire, like, everybody wakes up the next morning to go to company battle and we all have food poisoning. Right? Ugh. Not good. <laughs> Not good. There's so many, like, I can teach you the basics, again, like the rice thing and the don't put mayonnaise in the sun thing and, and, and don't undercook your chicken. Always have a food thermometer with you. That's, that should be mandatory in your feast kit um, if you're a feastocrat. Always bring a working food thermometer to everything you're cooking. Um, what was it? I just had another one in my head. Be careful with ground beef. Because the more surfaces something has, the more opportunity bacteria has to grow. Safe food handling with Faye Wellen. Uh, <laughs> just be very safe. And honestly, to seek us out. There's so many people that I know that are safe food handled in AmpGuard. Um, use our skills, right? We paid to take this course, or our work paid to take this course. Um, we know our stuff, and we're probably going to save you a lot of heartache and headache and somebody possibly from getting sick. Um, we'll teach you about cross-contamination. Whereas you don't cut up all of your chicken for your kebabs and then cut up the peppers after. Right? Not, that's not common sense for everybody. Or using the same spoon in the macaroni salad 
that you've just used um, uh, sour cream or a dairy product, and then also serving the potato salad that you lovingly kept dairy-free, which is no longer dairy-free at this point <laughs> because you've just contaminated it. So, yes, there are people that sensitive. Um, always treat it super seriously. Um, so, yeah, uh, always have your serving utensils on the day of. Make sure you carry tinfoil. <laughs> tinfoil is so important. That was literally the first thing that somebody who taught me how to do feasts was like, always bring tinfoil. Always. Because you can make leftover packages, you can seal stuff, you can... Oh my god, tinfoil is amazing. I get the giant Costco one. Yeah. It should be in the feast bin kit. It's awesome. Um, so yeah, day of. Make sure you have all your prep food. Make sure you have everything that you need to cook on. As a side note, um, the morning of, you should be checking all of the equipment that you're using to cook because I've shown up to a place and the oven didn't work. <laughs> so then immediately in the morning, I can just go straight back home and cook everything at home or you're running around a site that you don't live in and begging somebody to use their ovens. Um, usually someone will facilitate, but don't expect it. At that point, you need to grab your autocrat and say, hey, guess what? <laughs> We need to eat cold food. So, yeah. Check your equipment. Make sure you have your safety equipment. Make sure all of your team is there. Somebody's missing for whatever reason. Somebody drank too much the night before. They just couldn't make it. Maybe they didn't feel like it that day. They're not feeling well. Replace them. Chances are you had them doing a specific job. Um, yeah. Make sure you have all of your stuff ready. And everything is working. And then, feast time of the day of. Um, my personal uh, thing is, I had mentioned before, um, I always call the allergies and food sensitivities first. Because that is the biggest, when things get really hectic, super busy, and everybody comes running up for feast, that's when mistakes happen, that's when people get sick, that's when cross-contamination happens. Always serve your allergy and people first. I know monarchy is important. I know people want to serve knights first. Um, this is more important. Sorry. Then your belt. You supers don't have to. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, do honestly, not feel obligated and, to do so. <laughs> yeah. a, a, a proper and good monarchy and king will understand why you're calling food sensitivities first. Um, don't be a dick and say you have a food sensitivity and come up to get food and ask me for the non-food sensitivity food. Um, I will probably serve you last. I've had people do that. <laughs> can, I, can I just throw another note on that? Yeah. If you're not cooking with what I have a food sensitivity to, I shouldn't be at the front of the line. Just as a general rule. Yeah. So if I... I've already made it um, apparent that all of my feast is dairy and lactose free, I'll, I have a vegetarian option, but I have specifically made, like, all of Feast is dairy-free. All of Feast is gluten-free. All of Feast is, like, for whatever reason, this will never happen, meat-free. It'll never happen. So I know vegetarians always come up when I ask for food sensitivities. Yeah. They always have meat. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, so, like, the people who needed specific spices, or um, in Baron's case, he's allergic to garlic. So, chances are everybody else has garlic in it. I'm going to ask him to come up first or one of the first people. So then I can, cause I probably have them portioned out and separately from all the rest of the food being kept warm because I just will not risk cross contamination at all. Mm -hmm. I've been so so random who have, um, yeah. Sorry, random side note. Um, so after all the allergies and stuff, um, one of the reasons why they ask like the monarchy to come up is because um half of them have to run court so they need to to have their thing so that they can finish prepping the wards and then um sometimes they start court while people are still eating um not yeah. because of their rank like i want to be very clear about that um mm -hmm. I, I personally am like i really don't like when um they call up like knights and nobles and stuff um, because yeah. we're just people, we're just equal players. Um, like, I don't really like the, the divide thing there, personally. Um, mm -hmm. like, I've, 
I'll be honest with you. A lot of times when that when that happens, I'll I'll find somebody and go like, go take my spot. <laughs> Say it's for me. It's not for me. Like I'm not eating feast, but I'm just like here, go up. Like <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> just yeah. have the spot. I like, understand. The, yeah, I understand the period accuracy of of how that would be. Um, in the monarchy's case, chances are if I'm feastocrat, um, I know all of the allergies on the um, monarchy table specifically. Yep. Their plates have already been made and should already be up at court because they're probably furiously writing awards. Um, there's always somebody you can grab to say, okay, here's the monarchy plates. Please go bring them up for me. Because you have a team, right? No feastocrat works alone. No, no feastocrat should work alone. You should have somebody that is able to do runs for you. Yeah. So, yeah. The, sorry. Darian, you had something to say. I, I see it in your eyes. <laughs> Uh, it, it was just to build off the, the, the nobility thing. Um, when someone has a noble title, it's a thank you from the group, not privilege among the group. So, uh, so we can go in whatever order. <laughs> yes. If, it, if yeah. it's, um, well, these are the lactose intolerant plates, these, these are the, the allergy plates, these are the food sensitivity plates. And I don't think that you would announce whose allergy is what, but no. if we're at the back of the bus, that's fine too. We, we can come up and grab our food last. If we have um, to start so court, a... expect court to be late then. <laughs> yeah. So that brings up a really good point. Um, just as like a personal thing, I don't know if anybody else will do this, but I am definitely going to offer this. If you are sensitive about your food allergy or about a food dislike or whatever, um, feel free <laughs> to tell me. That's the thing is tell me. And um, if I can and, and are, am going to accommodate you, um, you don't have to come up in the line. Um, talk to me beforehand. I'll put your plate aside. And then you come up with the rest of the group. And I'm going to serve you that plate. Um, we've, we're super lucky in the Nine Blades that um, I think we topped out, I think Bot D was 178. Um, I can definitely pick you out and keep it se uh, separate. Uh, one out of 178 people. I can remember that. Um, I can't speak for other feastocrats. That's just like a weird personal thing for me. Um, but I can also, I will advocate for you. Um, food sensitivities are super important to me. Um, I have, nobody probably know this. I'm allergic to black mushrooms, a specific Asian mushroom hmm. that I cannot eat. Um, so, um, I've only had it happen once that it was in a feast, which is really weird because you have to specifically go out and buy that mushroom, but it's never happened to me, but I know that it's, um, how it feels when you're not sure if you can eat what's in front of you and if it's going to make you sick and ruin the event for you. Um, super important. It's a, it's a safety, it's a medic thing. You know what I mean? Take it seriously. Um, if you don't, I'm going to be on your back. Because I will take it seriously. Yep. Oh yeah. I think that hits nail on the head on something. Sorry. I think that hit hits nail on the head to a um, discretion. If you have a list of everyone's allergies at an event, you should not be publicizing who's mm -hmm. allergic to what. If it's in your feast team and you're like, okay, so this is um, this is Varen's plate. This is Darian's plate. This is. Um, uh, Admiral's plate. That's because that's a need to know thing. But you don't go running around. Uh, hey, hey, guess what? Guess what? Darian's allergic to. Guess what? Varen's allergic to. Guess what? I feel yeah, like a jerk. I just did that. <laughs> um, I just like, <laughs> no, people. <laughs> you haven't named it. Well, okay, you named one person, but um, I named that, that... Varen for sure. And most mm -hmm. of the time, so these are also people who are very vocal when I do a public. Um, mm -hmm. Please list your allergy. As a side note, that's another thing that goes into the pre-bid. If you see that post go up, please answer it. Don't assume that I know your allergy, even though I might. Put it up there, because honestly, all the other feastocrats use it too. We all keep lists. It's always, always, always post your allergy. Um, if you're not comfortable going along with that, private message the feastocrat. And we will make mm -hmm. note of it. So, yeah. Yeah. That was actually what that I was, was going to say. Amazing yeah yeah if you're not and we'll work it out if i can accommodate you for whatever reason we're gonna we're gonna mm -hmm. talk about it and then you don't come expecting 
to be able to eat just because you posted, we'll talk about it, right? Food sensitivities are a very serious thing, in my opinion. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And going so many, into so other words. like things that um, we've discussed before, like for, especially for medical stuff, right? Um, advocating for yourself is extremely important. Um, mm -hmm. If if you do have um, um, issues with talking about that sort of stuff, um, find somebody that you feel comfortable with, somebody that you trust, right? Especially like if you don't know um, the feast of crap, you have a lot of anxiety about, you know, requests and things like that. Talk to somebody mm -hmm. that you're comfortable with and they can advocate on your behalf, right? They can have that conversation um, if that's not something that you're comfortable with and that all can be done in private. Um, that doesn't need to be like a super public thing um, if that's not something that you're comfortable with. But at the end of the day, it's very important that um, one way or another that that is advocated so that um, to make sure that, you know, you do get a meal um, at the event and um, whatever um, needs to be uh, made accessible for you can be accommodated. Yeah. As a side note, as a feastocrat or as any part of the feast team, never call somebody out for not eating your food ever there's a reason um maybe they don't eat in public maybe it's a mental thing whatever it is do not call attention to that if people like your food they're going to come tell you um if people don't like your food chances are they're not going to tell you they're going to tell the person next to them uh don't take it personally you know chances are you're you're still going to feed most people that's fine if you didn't make anybody sick or whatever, but never, ever, ever call people out for not coming in your feast line. Don't make them feel guilty for not eating your food. There's probably an underlying reason. Um, and it's none of your business <laughs> if they don't eat your food. That's fine. That being said, it's not necessarily wrong to do the social butterfly thing and float around and see how people like the feast either. Asking Honestly, the... I will ask people to come to me because again, I don't want to accidentally call somebody out for not, like, I don't want to put somebody in an uncomfortable position because maybe somebody doesn't like, mm, I can't think of paprika. Somebody doesn't like paprika and I put paprika all over my potatoes. I don't want to put them in an uncomfortable position to make, to make them think that they are going to make me feel bad because they're not eating it. And chances are I'm not going to get an honest answer anyway. Let them enjoy it. You know what I mean? Don't. Mm -hmm don't worry about it you've done it at this point feast is done feast is served you can't mm -hmm. do anything about it um if people have an issue with your feast it you're gonna hear back that's a great thing of you know, when i go to the after um is um yeah so yeah does that does that make sense that's just a personal okay. opinion yeah. with me mm -hmm. i won't go and ask people if they like my feast unless i personally like really know them so like i will ask ken because I really, really respect um, what he thinks of my food. Um, I will ask, like, Hobo, or um, I'd probably ask Cam. I've never actually cooked for Cam. But other feastocrats, chances are I will ask them how they thought about my food. Everybody else, if they really like it, they're probably going to come up and tell you. Like, oh my god, I really like that. That was amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, they're pretty vocal with that. I just, I'm really bad about I don't want anybody to be called out. I don't want to make anybody feel uncomfortable, especially when it comes to that kind of thing. That's a personal opinion. Mm -hmm. If you like to be a social butterfly, you do. You can always come up and ask me how your food is. Um, I will be brutally honest if I don't like something, just the warning. <laughs> <laughs> I will be. I am mean. <laughs> I'm the evil chancellor. <laughs> Okay, so do not, I will not uh, do that then. Okay, got an idea. <laughs> do not cook for Faye Willen. I, I know that now. I mean, you can cook for me. Ask, ask John. I loved his blue pancakes. They were amazing. He like a cook, like, I'd yeah, cook for you, but I can't. <laughs> no, Frostbite, I couldn't stay at his house for um, allergy reasons. And um, he's still, on the Sunday, brought me the breakfast that he had made for his guests in a little takeout container oh. for me to eat at the event. I, I almost cried. Like, <laughs> I did. I almost cried. I probably did, like, tear up a little bit. Those, those kind of things, like, oh, they warm my heart. Food is, food is amazing. 
food is a connection. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to think of anything um, on the day. Okay, so your food has been served. All of the courses have been served. Court is going on. Um, most Vistacrats will be minorly paying attention as you will probably see in most courts, uh, if the Feast of Crack gets called up for an award or whatever, you probably have to like scream, train them to get them out of the kitchen because that's true. <laughs> we are cleaning. We are yeah. cleaning and most of the time we have a time limit to be in the site, which means we are cleaning up after however many 50, 60 people doing dishes, all that kind of thing. So don't don't get annoyed that you probably have to like literally chase us to come up to court. And most of the time we're like, okay, thanks for the thing, gotta go. <laughs> so because unless you have an ins this is where we kind of don't get a lot of help is the dishes and the cleanup. Um, if you don't have an issue with that, always volunteer. We will totally take it because we have to pack up leftovers and we have to um dispose of stuff take out garbages usually that's where the biggest garbage is is the feastocrat um most sites you have to take care of your own garbage or put it somewhere specific uh, that kitchen needs to be exactly how you found it you cannot leave dirty dishes um you cannot leave a dirty kitchen you're gonna get a black flag on the uh, on the site they're never gonna let you back always 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 clean up everything and Feast and food is the messiest part, usually, unless you have, like, I don't know, paintball. Um, uh, real quick, just on, oh, um, just because I was just thinking, uh, random tip for, for those that are in Monarchy. Um, if you know that you have an, um, an award for anyone that's on the Feast team, um, have, have a on-deck notice, right? Have a runner go and let them know, hey, uh, yeah. they're going to be calling you up or something, so get ready right um so that yeah. you know you don't want it to be that moment of okay right uh countess faye wellen please come before the court where's oh and, she's and... in the okay no we'll wait right like it'll it'll actually prolong things right it'll make things a lot smoother if somebody can go run and grab them and by the time they come out right um you're mm -hmm. ready to give that just uh just a time management thing Mm -hmm. um, also, make sure that you put all the awards together, so you don't call Faye Wellen out of the kitchen three times. That. Oh once, God, yes, that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and sorry. it's okay to have have uh, the the monarch give the awards. Then the region comes up and gives Faye Wellen her awards, and then the champion comes up, yep. does the awards, that. and then goes back yep. to the monarch's turn. Hundred percent. So story that. time with Faye Wellen. <laughs> Very amusing. Um, at Wildfire specifically, <laughs> um, I was trying to make sure that Cat was not doing any kind of food prep because I knew she was going to get called up. Uh, they didn't tell me I was going to get called up. So oh. when I got <laughs> called up, I was in watermelon, covered in watermelon juice, had to put my knife down, and then somehow trip over all of these weird-ass pants that I was wearing to be like, okay, we got to do this quick, and I'm running through people in the chairs or whatever. I'm like, cool, thanks for the thing. There's watermelon juice all over this beautiful award. Sorry, bro, oh. gotta go. And go back and Fucking cutting watermelon. <laughs> like, Damn it, no! <laughs> Damn it! So, yeah. Um, best laid plans. Uh, chances are my hands are dirty. Don't give me a pretty award if I'm cooking food. Or at least provide me gloves. Or just show it to me and then put it aside and I will grab it after I wash my hands. So, yeah. Just, that's my tips and tricks specifically for me. <laughs> so, yeah. So, super, super, super yeah. random? Um, oh, laminated! Yes. <laughs> yeah. Be careful be with sweet. um, like feast and stuff for like scrolls and stuff. Like especially if you're at, like at the head table and whatnot. Um, because like I've I've had somebody give me an award before, and while I was helping organize like cleanup and stuff, um, somebody put it in a a water spot on the table and wrecked it. So like um, yeah. yeah be careful. <laughs> And that's um, that's a good thing. Like if you spill food and stuff like that, just clean it up. Be an adult, please. Unless you're like a toddler, you should be cleaning <laughs> up your own stuff. Know what I mean? Don't yep. don't make my me and my feast team clean it up because chances are 
Well, there's usually a cleanup team, but in the end, Feast is probably the big cleanup. Um, so yeah, doing dishes, all that stuff, making sure the kitchen is exactly how you found it. You know, um, make sure you have everything with you. Don't leave stuff in the fridge or the freezer or anything. I mean, most sites will kind of give you a pass on that, but like if you leave an entire apple crisp in the freezer or something, they're going to be pissed. Um, I might have a casually interrupting child in a second. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> so I knew that he was going to sneak down and be like, can I go? And I'm like, yes, you can go. Yes. Thank you. Because I <laughs> love my boy. He does dishes. As a side note, he's amazing. Um, so we yeah, appreciate the sacrifices of our... Of, of the individuals that live in our homes to let us do this and use up the internet and yes. making a, there's be literally a, a quiet a space <laughs> thing happening in my backyard right now they've got oh. like the lawn chairs six feet apart and there's three of them so yeah they're not playing amp guard but they're amp guarders that i met through amp guard we're all socially distancing in my backyard if you've noticed at the beginning of the video i was like <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Be quiet! <laughs> so, yeah. We appreciate so, yeah. your sacrifice <laughs> for the pursuit of knowledge. Yes. <laughs> I, I will tell them to, to, to watch the video because they are mentioned at exactly how we're mentioned. We love you. Visits. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yes. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Okay. I want to sort of. I want to be able to get to another person. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Cleaning up. All that stuff. You have help. It's great. Leave everything the way it was. Uh, make sure all your receipts have been handed in. Um, if you needed to buy anything on the day, extra stuff, um, uh, extra plates, extra bowls, whatever, you didn't have enough, that kind of thing, you need to go pick up water, make sure all of those receipts are given to either the patrolocrat or the autocrat um, and kept super safe. And um, yeah, so that is, I'm trying to think, day up. Is there anything that I'm missing? sleep. You should probably sleep after that because you're going to be really tired. Self-care. Um, be nice. Bring your, bring, your, bring your feast of crack coffee. They'll need it. <laughs> if they're not making it for themselves already, I always bring it to crap. <laughs> Even if it's only me drinking it. Like, excuse to bring a 120 cup coffee maker. Why not? Which I can also borrow from work, which is awesome. I love my work. So, coffee yeah. is a pretty solid peace offering for any crack. Yes. Yes. Most of us are running on no sleep Water. the whole event. Water I don't drink coffee, coffee, but I do drink hot chocolate. chocolate. <laughs> oh, nice. See, I actually, that's one of the things that I have at the rookery. Just saying, because there's a few people who do not drink um, coffee. I have coffee, tea, and hot chocolate available. If you ever visit Ottawa, the rookery, just saying. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Okay, so that is the day of. I'm trying to think of the anything make sure you have all of your stuff that you have borrowed and it was previously mentioned make sure all of those things are clean and able to be returned and in working order like crock pots and stuff right yes i never i haven't borrowed any yet so i don't know um in my case if i brought my stuff to work dirty i would never be able to borrow it again so um yes okay post site post feast Relax. You did it. You fed the masses. Congratulations. It's such a good thing. Make sure that um, the pro your part of the profit and loss is being filled in correctly um, and that everything was um, listed properly. Um, if you feel you want to, um, sometimes posting a, hey, what did you think of Feast? What could I have done better? What did I do amazing? Um, on the event page, lets people allow you to give you feedback um, at their leisure. You're not forcing it any, out of anybody. If they want to post, they will post. Um, don't feel bad if you don't get any replies. I, it's just something if you want to do whatever. And yeah, there's anything else. I know I'm missing something. I have to be. No, I'm good. I think I'm, I think I'm good. Yeah. I can't think of anything. I did. <laughs> Feet. Solid. <laughs> it is a task. 
thank oh thank all of your yes see the awards all those people that helped you you are also the person to uh put them forward to awards because uh feast is hard feast is tiring those are roses right there that person who ran all the monarchy meals up might not have their first rose that's their first rose or their second rose in my opinion um yeah somebody washed all your dishes for you oh my god definitely a rose my god yes all of those things roses definitely thank your team for sure yes okay i'm good yeah i'm good (laughs) (laughs) i'm a babbler is there any questions Again, 20 second delay. If uh, you do have any questions, if you could tag me, that'd be super, super swell. Um, see, see, Curls knows where he's at. He, he agrees with me at the hot chocolate. Which Good is stuff. totally fine. Um, <laughs> I have been known to bring both and mix both. Uh, mocha Ugh. is right. <laughs> That's what a mocha is. Hot chocolate, coffee, together. Is it? Marrying, I... happiness, yes. That is exactly what it is. Did not know that. <laughs> I, I just prefer either coffee or mead. There's very little middle ground in my universe. I wouldn't mix those two. Maybe no. coffee and fuse <laughs> Exclusive. Mead. Yeah, exclusively. So, yeah. Uh, I know there's coffee flavored mead that I need to try. Yeah. That would be, yeah, weird infusion. I don't, I'm not a drinker again. It's the coffee. Uh, I really like coffee, but I will not turn down hot chocolate, um, especially if there are marshmallows in it. Oh, yeah. Marshmallows, whipped cream. Well, done. That's <laughs> so good. Um, so, again, if so you have any if questions. If I ever screw up as a local chancellor, I need to bring you coffee or hot chocolate with marshmallows. Yeah. That's, a... that, that's the peace offering? <laughs> I mean, we're pretty peaceful. I'm not going to say no. Like, I am self-proclaimed sugar addict. So, like, coffee. Hot chocolate, tea little, green tea. I like green tea. Green tea is delicious. I'm not. So, I like all things. Yeah. Again, um, feel free to also message on Discord. Tag me on there uh, for featured park for the Nine Blades Discord. Uh, or again, right, um, you can tag me right here in the Twitch stream uh, if you have any questions. Um, other than that, if uh, if we're all good on this, we can move to our next crap position, and that will be the last one for tonight. Um, I'm gonna two, BRB I'm... again. Yep, yep, all good. Because I'm a woman, <laughs> and also part mouth. <laughs> you guys turned off again. And a beeping. And I want to now create a TENS unit that has, like, video games on it. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So, 